Shalom. We the Rahib Israelites coming to you week in, week out, prophesying this truth and the return of the Heavenly Father, which is prophecies found in the Holy Scriptures. First and foremost, want to give all praises, glory, and honor to Yahweh, Baha Shem, Yahweh Shai, Baha Racha Kodash. Yahweh is the proper name of the Heavenly Father, and Yahweh Shai is the proper name of the Son. Yahweh Shai, who the world ignorantly and willingly called Jehovah and Jesus. And Baha Racha Kodash is in the Holy Spirit. The way we're able to understand these prophecies, these parables, these script, and these uh, mysteries of the scriptures, and go out and Declare it with understanding and teach it. And also as the true worship is what I do. Worship in spirit and truth. And double honest our elders and apostles. Great millstone which the most I set up. Who taught us his word. And that do continue to preach and teach his word. In truth, sincerity, and charity. And shalom to all you all can listen and believe as well. Wherever you may be. Preaching the pro proper doctrine and name. I just want to go into this lesson real quick. The second measure is the seventh chapter, and I will read through it, put a point out a few points, and then get some more scriptures. Because on on a road to on a road to uh, the kingdom of heaven, man, you go through things, and you know it's all part of the game. It's all part of the condition, the trials, you know, the tribulations, the afflictions, and all the things the scripture said we was gonna have to go through. You know, because they look at who the real ignorant called Jesus, our Lord and Savior, Yahweh Shai is his proper name. Look at everything he went through, you know. He, he became poor when he could have been rich. Okay, he despised the shame, the disrespect. Okay, and he was scoffed and laughed at, man. Okay, and ultimately he was marred more than any man, beaten horribly more than any man. Okay, and hey, he died for our sins, man, for our sakes, a painful death. Okay, and after death, he received all the glory and the promises and the crown, man. Okay, and as it was written, as it had to go down, the will of the Heavenly Father, you know. Everything was made subject unto him, okay, and he had to go through these things to receive his uh, rewards, man. He had to go through these things because it was written and set up that it was going to happen. And I just want to pull out a couple of scriptures and I'm going to go into it because us as men of the Lord following his likewise footsteps. Because the scriptures say the servant is not greater than his master. We're going to go through all type of things on different levels, man. Especially being in the knowing the truth, you know. But the wicked, man, they're going to go through things that they're not going to consider, man. Therefore, they're they, they wasting their time, which is the whole point of the lesson. It's going to prove it later on down in the uh, chapter. The second Ezra 7 and 1. And when I had made an end of speaking these words, that was sent unto me the angel which had been sent unto me the nights of four. And said unto me, Up Ezra, hear the words that I am come to tell thee. And I said, Speak on, my God. Then said he unto me, The sea is set in a wide place, that it might be deep and great. But the case, but put the case, the entrance were narrow like a river. Who then can go into the sea to look upon it and to rule it? If he went not through the narrow, how could he go? How could he come into the broad? You know, so if you ain't going through that narrow gate, man. Okay, if you ain't going through the uh, that narrow entrance, what the scriptures goes into. How can you get the bride, man? And the bride will be in what? The kingdom of heaven. That rest which we labor and hope for. You know? I'm going to get that too. Uh, and, this, and the you know, it, it, the, the scriptures is uh, manifold. But uh, I'm going to just deal with the first layer, man. Because yeah, that straight gate is the, the afflictions and the sorrows and, and the uh, sacrifices you got to go through. And being in the truth. They say NTN at the straight gate, for wide is the gate, and broad is the way that leads to destruction, and many there be which go and they're at. You know, cause it's broad and it's, it's wide, man. Okay, it's easy. It don't come with reproof, it don't come with accountability. Okay, and ultimately it's to play on the emotions and the mindsets and the lust of this flesh to get you distracted and go off, man, get destroyed ultimately. And this world is rigged upon that on all levels. And especially those that rule, man, they push that. And uh, what is also that wide gate and broad is the way that leads to destruction is these religions, man. 
Because all our people in there, mainly the Negroes, Latinos, Native Americans, so-called, and the confusion of face scatter, wherever they may be. They the main ones in these religions, man. Main ones in these false doctrines, worshiping these idols. But it leads to destruction, man. But that straight gate is knowing the truth, knowing the true heritage, man. And once you know that, you understand and you consider why you're getting jacked up, why you're going through what you're going through, why people went through what they went through. But in the midst of that all, it's a separation. The wicked going to go through uh, tail, trouble, and afflictions. But they're not going to consider and they're going to get the wild, man. And uh, the righteous going to go through the same thing. And they're going to get the wild, man. They're going to get the kingdom of heaven, the, the glory, the promises. Just as our Lord and Savior did, man, because we believe that. It say, uh, because straight is the gate and narrow is the way which leadeth unto life, and few there be that find it. And that few is talking about the elect. You know? And uh also going back into second Nazareth, it breaks down that straight gate more clearly, man. It say put the case put the case, the entrance were narrow and like a river. Who then can go into the sea and look upon it and rule it? If he went not through the narrow, how could he come into the broad? There is also another thing. A city is built and set upon a broad field and is full of good things. Let's talk about the kingdom of heaven. The entrance thereof is narrow, that straight gate. And it said is a dangerous place to fall, like as, it, like as if there were fire on the right hand and on the left a deep water. So that, that that's symbolic, man, for a the hell... You got to go through when you enter into that straight gate. Okay, when you walk in that tight rope and that uh that that, that, that way to salvation, man, because you got to be on point. You got to examine yourself and you got to continue to push the word out all while fighting the spiritual thoughts. I mean, all while fighting the spiritual demons, man, the spiritual wickedness. Okay, all while fighting the thoughts and the deeds and the lust of this flesh. You know, and the things that happen in your life and happen around you that try to hinder you from serving the Lord, getting closer to him. These is all the uh, straight things, man. These is all the uh, requirements you have to go through as going and interesting the entrance of that narrow. You know, knowing that everything outside of this path we're walking on is dangerous. Everything outside of this path we're walking on to get us destroyed. And things that you look at so simple, trying to get a, a better living life and being comfortable, you look at that so simple, like, oh, this can't destroy me, you know. But them to be the things that destroy you, man, because it requires time and it requires a lot of other things to be good at. So, therefore, it brings you away from the truth, man. And we got to be mindful of that, too. But reading on, it says, and only one path between them both. Even between the fire and the water, so small that could but one man go there at once. So that's order, man, that the Lord require. You know, one man going at once, you learn from the man in front of you. And that be, that's that few, going back into that Matthew 7. That's that few that be that find it. You know, the elect that find the truth and wisdom. And that's the only way you can walk the proper life, by finding the true wisdom. And I'm going to jump through this real quick. It says, um... And if the city now were given unto a man for inheritance, if he never shall pass the danger set before it, how shall he receive this inheritance? So the kingdom of heaven, that city that is built upon a broad field, all are full of good things. How shall we receive that inheritance, man? How shall we be the God's judges and rulers? Okay, the prince of power. How shall we receive that if we don't uh, go through the dangerous past man the trials and tribulations and affliction set before us you know he said and i said it is so lord then say unto me even so also is israel portion so that's our portion you negroes latinos native americans they say because for their sakes i made the world and with adam transgress my statues then was the decree that now is done you know the fact that hey, we uh uh we had the work and labor not just to get back into the good grace of the Lord, but here in our day-to-day -day lives, our lives were shortened, man. Okay, and all the curses that you see follow upon us until this day. It says, um, then, uh, then were the entrance of this world made narrow, full of sorrow, travail. They are but few and evil, full of perils and very painful. 
for the entrance of the older world were wide and sure and brought immortal fruit. And they that live labor not to enter to these straight and vain things, they can never receive those things that I laid up for them. So if you ain't going through that straight gate, if you ain't going through that difficulty, that dangerous uh, walk of life, man, knowing that anything happened to you for preaching his word and bringing the knowledge out, or just in general, you know, hey, that's what we got to go through. That's what we're mindful of. That's what we got to labor and intend to to receive the things laid up for us. I'm going to jump down and say verse 18. Nevertheless, the righteous shall suffer straight things and hope for the why. And that's the point of bringing this out. The righteous are going to go through them straight things. And they go hope for the why. That being the kingdom of heaven. That city built upon a broad place. That rest, the everlasting life, which we labor to enter into the kingdom of heaven. For they that have done wickedly have suffered the straight thing. So the wicked two thirds going to suffer and go through the same thing. And yet shall not see the why. You know, because in this age, in this time, they got ways that you can sell out your uh, soul, man. Either to be famous, entertain or some type of famous sports superstar. Or just a superstar in general. And they got ways you can sell out for certain careers that you choose through college, man. Because that's their main uh, breeding ground and recruiting ground, you know. But having a proper knowledge with understanding, you know that, hey, I got to have patience and I can't go about it that way. You know, therefore, you you keep a simple lifestyle, sort of saying you serve the Lord. And part of keeping that simple lifestyle, serving the Lord, comes with afflictions, comes with the straight things, comes with the dangers, you know. Comes with the trials and tribulation. You know, that's really the point on that. Uh, I'm going to just get to these scriptures real quick. The Psalms 34 and 9. Many are the afflictions of the righteous, but Yahweh delivered them out of them all. So many are the afflictions of the righteous, you know, because they know and consider why they getting jacked up. You know, but two-thirds, they don't consider, man. And they make... Uh, a irrational decision by selling their soul just to be comfortable or not serving the Lord just to live a comfortable life you know but you have to keep your patience and you have to serve the Lord and make not hasten the time of trouble as the rock say so you can get what was laid up the Second Corinthians 1 and 5 for as the sufferings of Yahweh Shai abound in us so our consolation also abounded by Yahweh Shai so the sufferings we going through you know, not only we showing the like sufferings that our Lord and Savior went through, you know, we going through ourselves because the service is not greater than his master, but our consolation, which we hope and labor for, is about to be how shot because he's going to give it to us if we endure as he did, man. He was obedient unto death, man. The scripture tell you he despised all them things that came upon him. Okay, he refused a lot of things and evil. He showed us the way. He was obedient to death when he died a horrible, painful death, and he received all the glory in the crown. And this is a true story, man. Everybody can agree that who the word ignorant called Jesus walked this earth, and he did what he did. But they don't give you the proper knowledge to understand that who he came for. He coming back to destroy his enemies. He coming back with what the world called UFOs, but it is the vehicles and the chariots of the Most High. He come back in his glory to bring salvation to select that few that went through the straight and that consider all the bad that they was going through and destroying the wicked, the sinners, man. The two-thirds that didn't consider, okay, that did things worthy of death, that never repented, that didn't consider the grace and the mercy. You know, and every other nation outside of that is just going to feel the wrath of the Lord, man, for touching the apple, for touching the Lord's chosen, sending us to slavery, lying to us, having our people caught up in the witchcraft and the black magic that they promote on a mass scale. To distract you people, man, and get you to sell out, you know, because misery love company. You know, and that's really the point on that. This said Corinthians 4 and 17, for our light afflictions, which is but for a moment, worketh for us a far more exceeding and eternal weight of glory. So these light afflictions, you know, the many afflictions of the righteous, it's only for a moment. You know, going back into that second Nazareth, let me read up. You know, this is really what it's going into. This is Israel portion to go through things, man, to be jacked up, to learn from our mistakes, to labor, to enter back into that rest and the mercies and grace of the, our Lord and Savior. 
Start with Yahweh and his son Yahweh Shai. They say, uh, the point is right here. Uh, they then were the entrance of this world made narrow, full of sorrow and travail. They are but few and evil, full of perils and very painful. You know, that light affliction, man. You know, and the reason why it's considered light. You know, because what we got coming, you know, that exceed the internal weight of glory is going to make it seem like, man, when we wake, when we really realize, it, like, man, you know, we all had to go through it for a reason and work at something. And say, while we look not at the things which are seen, but are the things which are not seen, for the things which are seen are temporal. So all the things we see now, all the careers we want to go and, and pursue, all the money, wealth, so-called, when it's not real money and wealth. That you want to be comfortable, live a comfortable life. That's temporal, man. You know, the curse is still going to follow you. The affliction is still going to follow you. Because that's what the Lord said was going to happen. Say, but things which are not seen are eternal. In the kingdom of heaven, man. And it starts having this word. It gives you eternal life. It gives you comfort when you're going through these things. Because you know, understand, and consider. Hey, we're getting punished less than our iniquities deserve. The Lord jacking us up to be better. But we got to take heed and be right and obedient so we can <laughs> receive, understand the fullness of it. For we know th that's really the point on that. I had uh, a couple more scriptures lined up. So I got to just press the next button. So I can. Yeah, so I had to get the scriptures. Uh, it's Romans 12 and 1. Ye that. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. So this is our reasonable service. As Ecclesiastes 12 say, fear the Lord, keep his commandments, for this is the whole duty of man. Going back in that second letter to seven, that's the whole duty of man, man. In order to get the kingdom of heaven and to receive the inheritance and the good things laid up for us, you know, that city, the kingdom of heaven. We got to go through these uh, pain, sorrows, evil, perils, man, evils, okay? Hey, but the righteous are going to be saved out of those, man. You know, our two-thirds get caught up in it. It say, and be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. You know, the man of the Lord is doing that, you know, renewing their minds, coming out of his mind state, you know, because it starts with the mind first. You know, a lot of our people are, uh, think they're free, but they're mentally enslaved by the way of this world, by the image of the beast, man. There's a lifestyle and his way of living, thinking it's right and it's wicked. The things that they accept, the doctrines and false, the false doctrines and false philosophies that they push, you know, how everything is just rigged, either to uh, discredit the Bible and the true man of the Lord or if the Bible is and it is misused man it's misinterpreted it's, it's not broken down properly you know and that goes all back into the fact that hey we have to labor we have to believe we have to present our bodies as a living sacrifice to get them good things man to escape all this evil all this wickedness all this uh, perils and painful things, man, that's coming upon us and that has been placed upon us. This, uh, 2 Corinthians 12 and 5. Of such a one I will glory, yet of myself I will not, but in my affirmities. So, Paul, you know, he glorious in affirmities, man. The things he went through, whether mental, physical, spiritual, you know. The second Corinthians eleven and thirty. If I must needs glory, I will glory of the things which concern my infirmities. You know, and the point you know, just another point proving, you know, if you glory in anything, you know that you glory and that you know the Lord and your infirmities, cause you know why you're getting jacked up. You can consider why you're getting jacked up. This second this first Peter four and twelve. Beloved, thinking not strange concerning the fiery trial, which is to try you as though some strange thing happened unto you. So it's not strange. We was ordained and appointed unto this, man. Especially since the day we agreed and believed in our Lord and Savior, man. And took of that cup. Say, but rejoicing as much as ye are partakers of Yahweh Shah's suffering. 
So we rejoice, okay? We glory in our affirmities. We glory in the things that we went through. We glory in the trials, tribulations we overcame through the spirit and power of Hashem Shah. You know, certain things that we cut out our life. Certain, you know, just having his wisdom alone, how we use it, you know, the things we go through on the day to day. Yeah, it sucks. And if it's minor, you know, but it's it, and right now, it sucks. And but it's all to build you up and make you better. Even then, during the time of Jacob's trouble, even then, during the hour of temptation, we're being tried right now. That fiery trial, you know, to make us perfect, to make us the elect, to bring us through it, to get everything that's laid up for us back in that second edge of seven. You say, uh, but rejoicing as much as ye are partakers of Yahweh shall suffer, that when his glory shall be revealed, ye may be glad also with exceeding joy. Knowing that we labored, you know, to enter into that uh, rest, man. You know, we went through them straight things. As it said in Second Ezra. To get that inheritance, man. You know, because it said, if this city now were given unto a man for inheritance, talk about that few that elect. Those that's going to appear with the, yeah, the Lord in glory. It's those that's uh, suffering and you have a shot. Those that have consolation when he returned and not now. They say, if he never shall pass the danger set before it, how shall he receive this inheritance? So you got to pass the danger. You got to go through it. But understand and know and consider, you know, and make not haste in the time of trouble, but constantly enduring as the scriptures say. It's Hebrews 2 and 10. For it became him for whom are all things and by whom are all things and bringing many sons unto glory. Talk about the elect, the few, the ones that want that inheritance, that passed that danger, that went through that narrow and straight entrance, that stayed on that path, in that order. They say to make the captain of that salvation perfect through sufferings. Who's our captain? Our Lord and Savior, have a shot. That one that showed us the way, man, and how to walk that straight path and that narrow path and enter into that straight gate that only a few go man because only a few people which is the elect can endure and go through that man and the other people that go back into the world man you know because if coming into the truth you lose out on a lot but it's all the test it's part of your trials and you go through a lot it's a part of your tribulations and afflictions and that this is Ephesians 3 and 13. Wherefore I desire that ye faint not in my tribulation for you, which is your glory. So we going through all this because this is our glory. Look what our Lord and Savior, how was I had to go through. He was obedient unto death. He died a painful death, but he received everything promised unto him. Uh, this, uh, It's a uh, Romans thought at one. Therefore, being justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord and Savior. How was shot? You know, a hey, uh, faith is a gift. Only need a few gonna have it, man. And they're gonna show that faith by their works. They believe. They're gonna show that they believe by their works. Going out, teaching, presenting their bodies as a living sacrifice, as Romans twelve say, being not conformed to this world. That's part of your works. Coming out of this mass state, receiving the true wisdom, knowledge, understanding, which the Lord gave us, the proper understanding through our teachers, you know, so we can uh, endure these things, man. That's the only way you can endure it, by faith and your works and your hope, you know, and your charity and repent, you know. It say verse two, but whom also we have access by faith into this grace wherein we stand and rejoice in the hope of the glory of God. You know, because we hope to be saved out of it. We hope that everything we went through is not, you know, for no reason, man. We hope that everything we went through is not vain. He said, not only so, but we glory in tribulation also, knowing that tribulation work with patience. Church is saying, patience possess ye your souls, man. They say, in patience experience. And experience hope, cause you got the experience and know how to do better when you grow into and growing in this knowledge, understanding, and the hope to get changed, the hope to be better and serve the Lord better, man. You know, all going back into Second Ezra the seventh chapter, man. 
you cannot get it unless you pass the danger place. You know, you cannot get it without going through that. Uh, get the let me get it real quick. You can't get it without going through the uh the uh, straight things. It's verse eighteen. Nevertheless, the righteous shall suffer the straight things and hope for the wide. You know, because we're subject to hope. You know. And everything we go through, it goes all back into hope, man. We hope to be saved. We hope to uh, be the man. We labor and hope to not be a two-third. We labor not to be the wicked leader suffer, man. Because everybody suffer, but you suffering for the right cause. You suffering for the kingdom of heaven. Is you suffering to be the proper judges and rulers and gods on the first go around and not have that shame that, man, I ain't even fight for the Lord that redeemed and saved me from my enemies and the spells and sorceries and witchcraft I was under. And that's really the lesson. Hope it was at a fan. Want to give all praise and glory and honor to Yahweh, Baha Sham Yahweh Shah, the one to the elders and apostles, great millstone, and taught us this truth in the midst of this wicked, perverse generation that sell out. And inshallah, I want to tell you, I can keep pushing and teaching the word, wherever you may be, in the proper name and doctrine, which is key to getting out of here. Inshallah.